ladies and gentlemen, and all the great people on the other side of the screen. My warmest greetings. Thank you for being with me again on Academic Driving YouTube channel. So this is the channel where I'm reading my books aloud, the books of cars and science. And uh, today's book will be about philosophy. Now, can cars have soul? The article I will read you today is called Transcendent Motoring. And it's one of the articles which you may find in my, <coughs> in my books. Just check out the link below and just, yeah, have a look. So, Transcendent Motoring. Motoring journalists used to say that a good car is a car with soul. But can it have one? I often encounter this statement on forums, TV shows, and in discussions with my friends that cars have souls. Even Jeremy Clarkson wrote a book once and titled it I Know You Got Soul. I encounter this statement so often that actually it doesn't sound unnatural to me. But what is the soul? Can a car have one? Above all, mates, let us sort the definitions out. A lot of smart chaps in the history of humankind have tried to grasp the soul. In ancient Greece, for instance, it was usually regarded as a divine or spiritual breath which animated the body. Without it, the body would lie thoughtless and motionless. Further, Socrates, for instance, argued that the soul was immortal and continued its existence after the person's death. As the body reached its physical limits and succumbed, the immortal soul had to abandon it and find another vessel to thrive in. Socrates also claimed that uh, the soul revealed itself in the human ability to think. In turn, Pindar considered that the soul slept while the limbs were active and vice versa. It awoke and brought a reward of joy or sorrow uh, which drew near when a person fell into dreams. In other words, the soul could show itself off only when the body was not active. Finally, Aristotle drew up a three-level typology of souls, claiming that plants, animals and people have different souls. The soul of plants allowed them to perform basic biological functions, such as growth, sustenance and reproduction. The soul of animals ensure their ability to act in accordance with their free will and uh, use six senses to make behavioral decisions. The souls of people embrace the features of first two and, in addition, included the superior power of reason. Uh, I mean, the ability to explore, explain and evaluate the world. The residents of human soul according to Aristotle, was its heart. In the magnificent medieval Arab world, Avicenna, or Ibn Sina, defined the soul as self-consciousness and self-awareness. In one of his essays, he encouraged people to imagine themselves floating in the air, uh, cut off from all senses. Avicenna argued that, even in this ultimately isolated condition, people would still be able to grasp their bodiless existence. People would still preserve the ability of self-consciousness. With this in mind, Avicenna concluded that the soul has nothing to do with the physical reality. It is a substance which exists regardless of what we feel and should be addressed uh, as an important elusive thing. In a couple of centuries, Descartes would return to this argument and arrive at his famous I think, therefore I exist. Uh, one of the most authoritative Catholic philosophers, Thomas Aquinas, agreed with the ancient Greeks that the soul animated the body. He also claimed that the human soul was immortal, unlike the souls of plants and animals, which failed to develop critical thinking and could not comprehend God. For these reasons, 
plants and animals were doomed to vanish in material and non-material worlds. Finally, Thomas Aquinas argued that the soul cannot be grasped by our limited senses. It simply exists and people should live with it. But let me speak of more recent times. The Encyclopedia Britannica claims that the soul is, quote, immaterial aspect or essence of a human being, that which confers individuality in humanity, often considered to be synonymous with other mind or the self, end quote. In turn, the Oxford Online Dictionary delivers the following. Soul is the spiritual or immaterial part of a human being or animal regarded as immortal. A person's moral or emotional nature or a sense or a, of identity. End quote. It becomes clear from both definitions that only those vessels can host souls which, first, are living creatures and or human beings and or personalities. Second, possess mind, sense of identity and or consciousness. And third, are capable of experiencing emotions and or adopting some moral principles. This said, a soul is immaterial. So even if the vessel is alive, conscious and moral, it is impossible to check whether the soul is indeed inside. Coming back to cars, they have none of the characteristics attributed to a soulful vessel. They are products of our technology, metal boxes on wheels. They cannot host souls a priori, even the ones Aristotle attributed to plants. However, as I see it, a car can emanate soul. It can become an integral part of the driver and deliver feelings of spiritual symbiosis. It may evolve into an extension of the driver's body and mind, thus becoming something bigger than a piece of cold machinery. But this feeling is a human thing entirely. It's, it's not a car's soul. Some drivers speak to their cars. Some try to grasp vibes of the car's mood out of the air before firing, firing it up. Although cars stand motionless, dedicated drivers know they boil with emotions. Every morning, when I see my young timer Mazda, I greet her and briefly tell her where we will go. And I think she understands me. And this makes me feel as if we would have set ourselves up as a team for this ride. And uh, she becomes an even more close friend of mine. Every time I notice a new rusted bolt or scratch in the paintwork, that starts aching. And it actually hurts me, not, not my car. But I tend to think that she feels the pain too. And that she appreciates my concern and empathy. I used to see a lot of pictures of trashed cars on the internet with comments from their drivers saying things like the car sacrificed itself but saved my life. What a pathetic nonsense. A car is not a living creature. It does not breathe and therefore it cannot sacrifice itself. It does not even know what a sacrifice means. Indeed, from the human perspective, the biggest sacrifice anyone can make is giving up his or her life to save someone else's or to save the homeland, thousands of lives. As far as driver vehicle relations are concerned, the first simply projects the universal values of humankind onto the second, thus making it alive. In other words, the driver awards the car both consciousness and morality, both, consti both constituents of the soul. And this soul finally comes into being, but, but only for that particular driver. 
Some drivers say the car acquires, acquires the soul in the factory when it gets screwed together. Therefore, for instance, Toyotas and Hondas have no souls. But because they are unique and handmade, TVRs or Ariels or McLarens have. Some say that, like sponges, handmade cars absorb the love and admiration of their creators. But this matters only if a particular driver cares. The amount of a soul a car gets from the factory depends on the acknowledgement and recognition of this fact by the owner. Thus, there are some people who celebrate the birthdays of their cars and those who scrap their cars when the windscreen gets cracked. The latter seem to have corrupted souls by themselves. Car drawings present another extension of soulfulness. Appearing on paper, the drawing may grow into something greater than a simple combination of lines and colors. The car which is drawn may become more real and integral than the car which is driven. The artist and later the viewer in invest themselves in the drawing and endow it with unique emotions and interpretations. The drawing thus acquires its soul. And the soul exists only for those who want to see it. To conclude, the car shines in the rays of our affection. We are the only ones responsible for making it a being, not just a thing. Our personalization of a particular car, our uncovering its uniqueness, our perception of its behavior and whims, that is what brings the car to life for us. Thank you for being with me and check out my other videos.